Hello. Oh, hey. <laughs> hey there again, uh, YouTube. It's Michael. Um, you know, I always like to post viable, um, important information for people who don't have time to research on them for themselves. Um, and this video I ran across, and it's uh, very, very cool. Um, it speaks a lot of truth. Shows what hypocrites some people are who talk out of the sides of their mouth. And I don't know if you can tell, but to me, this Fauci doctor character, I don't want to bear false witness against my neighbor, but this looks like a demonically possessed person. Anyway, you'll see at the end. <laughs> Here we go. Look back will be of wrong prediction after wrong prediction after wrong prediction, starting with uh, Ferguson in England. So I think we ought to have a, a little bit of humility in, in our uh, belief that we know what's best for the economy. And as much as I respect you, Dr. Fauci, I don't think you're the end all. I don't think you're the one person that gets to make a decision. We can listen to your advice, but there are people on the other side saying there's not going to be a surge and that we can safely open the economy. And the facts will bear this out. If that's the case. And I think that's important because in all likelihood is a good way of putting it. The vast majority of these people will have immunity instead of saying there is no evidence. You know, the WHO kind of fed into this by saying no evidence of immunity. And in reality, there's every evidence stacking up. And if you, in fact, a lot of the different studies have shown that it is very unlikely that you get it again in the short term. With regard to going back to school, one thing that was left out of that discussion is uh, mortality. I mean, shouldn't we at least be discussing what the mortality of children is? Um, this is for Dr. Fauci as well. You know, the mortality between 0 and 18 in the New York data approaches 0. It's not going to be absolutely 0, but it almost approaches 0. Between 18 and 45, the mortality in New York was uh, 10 out of 100,000. So really, we do need to be thinking about that. We need to uh, observe with an open mind what went on in Sweden where the kids kept going to school. The mortality per capita in Sweden is actually less than France, less than Italy, less than Spain, less than Belgium, less than the Netherlands, about the same as Switzerland. But basically, I don't think there's anybody arguing that what happened in Sweden is an unacceptable result. I think people are intrigued by it, and we should be. I don't think any of us are certain when we do all these modelings. There have been more people wrong with modeling than right. We're opening up a lot of economies around the, around the U.S., and I hope that people who are predicting doom and gloom and saying, oh, we can't do this, there's going to be a surge, will admit that they were wrong if there isn't a surge, because I think that's what's going to happen. In rural states, we never really reached any sort of pandemic levels in Kentucky and other states. We have less deaths in Kentucky than we have in, a, in, an, in an average flu season. It's not to say this isn't deadly, but really outside of New England, we've had a relatively benign course for this virus nationwide. And I think the one size fits all that we're gonna have a national strategy and nobody's gonna go to school is kind of ridiculous. We really ought to be doing it school district by school district and the power needs to be dispersed because people make wrong predictions. And really the history of this when we look back will be of wrong prediction after wrong prediction after wrong prediction starting with uh, Ferguson in England. So I think we ought to have a, a little bit of humility in, in our uh, belief that we know what's best for the economy. And as much as I respect you, Dr. Fauci, I don't think you're the end all. I don't think you're the one person that gets to make a decision. We can listen to your advice, but there are people on the other side saying there's not going to be a surge and that we can safely open the economy. And the facts will bear this out. But if we keep kids out of school for another year, what's going to happen is the poor and underprivileged kids who don't have a parent that's able to teach them at home are not going to learn for a full year. And I think we ought to look at the Swedish model and we ought to look at letting our kids get back to school. I think it's a huge mistake if we don't open the schools in the fall. Thank you. Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to determine what the government can do in a forceful way. Well, you make all kinds of recommendations. You, no. you make comments on dating, on baseball, on everything no. you can imagine. I'm just asking, you just said it, yeah. that protests increase the spread. No. I'm just asking you, should we try to limit the protests? No, I think I would leave that to people who have more of an, a, a position to do that. Mr. Jordan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Fauci, do protests increase the spread of the virus? Do protests increase the spread of the virus? Uh, I think I can make a general statement well, half a million protesters on June 6th alone, yeah. I'm just asking Try that to number get of people, eyes. does yeah. it increase the spread of the virus? Cra crowding together, particularly when you're not wearing a mask, contributes to the spread of the virus. Should we limit the protesting? I, I'm not sure what you mean, should, how do we say limit the protesting? Should government limit the protesting? 
I, I, I don't think that's relevant to... He's lying. Well, you just said He's if lying. it increases the spread of the virus, I'm just asking, should we limit it? Well, I'm, I'm not in a position to determine what the government can do in a forceful way. Well, you make all kinds of recommendations. You, no. you make comments on dating, on baseball, on everything no. you can imagine. I'm just asking you. You just said that yeah. protests increased the spread. No. I'm just asking you, should we try to limit the protests? No, I think I would leave that to people who have more of an, a, a position to do that. I can tell you. Government that, stopping people from going to church, Dr. Fauci. Yeah. Last week in the Calvary Chapel case, five liberals on the Supreme Court said it was okay for Nevada <laughs> to limit church services. Governor, I, I mean, Justice Gorsuch said it best. He said, there's no there's no world in which the Constitution permits Nevada to favor Caesar's palace over Calvary Chapel. I'm just asking, is there a world where the Constitution says you can favor one First Amendment liberty protesting right. over another practicing your faith? I'm not favoring anybody over anybody. I'm just making a statement that's a broad statement that avoid crowds of any type, no matter where you are. Unless you're because protesting. Because that leads to the acquisition and transmission. And I don't judge one crowd versus another crowd. When you're in a crowd, particularly if you're not wearing a mask, that induces it's, it's the a simple, It's a simple question, doctor. Should we limit the protest? Government is obviously lim limiting people yeah. going to church. And, and look, uh, I'm there's, not, been no, there's been no violence that I, I yeah. can see at church. I haven't seen people yeah. during a church service go out and, and harm police officers right. or burn buildings. But we know that. I mean, for 63 days, nine weeks, it's been happening in Portland. Right. Yeah. Well, one night in Chicago, 49 officers were injured, but no limit to pro no limit to protests. But boy, you can't go to church on Sunday. Uh, I don't know how many times I can answer that. I'm not going to opine on limiting anything. I'm just going to tell you. You've opined a on a lot of things, Dr. Fauci. Yeah, but I've never. This is something that directly anything. impacts the spread of the virus, yeah. and I'm asking your 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 position on the protests. Yeah, I'm. Well, I'm not going to opine on limiting anything. I'm telling you what it is the danger. And you can make your own conclusion about that. You should stay away from crowds, no matter where the crowds government has stopped, are. Government has, the government has stopped oh people from going to work. In fact, just in New Jersey four days ago, Ian Smith, Frank Trombetta were arrested for opening up, for trying to operate their business, their gym. They were arrested. But I, my, my bet is if these two individuals own this gym, were outside just in front of their gym, and all the people who were working out in their gym were outside protesting. They'd been just fine. But because they were in the gym working out, actually running their business, they got arrested. Do you think that's okay? You know, I'm not going to opine on who gets arrested and who does not. I mean, I, I, you get where I'm going. I'm telling you, as a public health official, I say crowds. Do you see the inconsistency, though, Dr. Fauci? There's no inconsistency, Congressman. There's what? No There's no inconsistency. So you're allowed to protest millions oh, of people on one liars. day in crowds, such yelling, and screaming, but you try to run your business, you get arrested. And if you stood right outside of that same business and protested, you wouldn't get arrested? You don't see an inconsistency there? I don't understand what you're asking me as a public health official to opine on who should get arrested or not. That's not my position. You could ask no, you've as advocate, much as you you've want, advocated for certain businesses. You've advocated for certain businesses to be shut down. I'm, I'm just asking you on your position on the protest. I'm I mean, not, I haven't seen one. We've heard a lot about hair salons. I haven't seen one hairstylist who, between haircuts, goes out and attacks police or sets something on fire. But we've seen all kinds of that stuff during protests, and we know the protests actually increase the spread of the virus. You've said that. I said crowds. I didn't say specifically. I didn't say protest to anything. So what is a protest? A crowd. I didn't idiots. say that. You're putting words in my mouth. No, I, I, want, I, would, I just want an answer to the question. Do the protests increase the spread of the virus? I, I don't have any scientific evidence that anything. I can tell you that crowds are known, particularly when you don't have a mask, to increase the acquisition and transmission. No matter so what. So you don't have a position is. on whether the protests increase the spread of the virus or don't increase the spread of the virus? I'm saying that crowds, wherever the crowds are, can give you an increased probability that there's going to be acquisition and transmission. But do you understand Americans' concern? Protesting, according, particularly according to the Democrats, is just fine, but you can't go to work, you can't go to school, you can't go to church. There's limits. He must have been at a satanic ritual the night before. Because who has dark circles like that? Either that or he got punched in the face. It's placed on all three of those fundamental activities. The First Amendment activities, but protesting is just fine. You know, the I'm... The gym, uh... <laughs> okay. 
Oh, there's another demon right there. <laughs> God bless you all. I'll talk to you later.